You're listening to the audio version of the popular video cast, Cocktails with Cav, found only on X. Follow us here on Spotify and on the X platform at Cav Literature. Oh, happy new year, everybody. I'm George Cavanaugh, your host of Cocktails with Cav, coming to you with the first show of 2024. Got to thank everybody in the audience. Y'all been so good to us. And this is going to be a banging new year with a great lineup of guests, some live remotes. Oh, it's it's just going to be a fun time. Like I said, you're going to want to follow us. Hit that bell for all the notifications so you never miss a show. It really is going to be something this year. And I'm looking forward to what the new year brings. Oh, I got my festive first of the year show cocktail little vodka and orange juice and everybody pour one sit back and relax for tonight's show Mm. we have a great great author coming to you live from Waikiki Hawaii tonight Roy Huff going to talk about his incredible series time travel and Everville that's available everywhere it's it's just going to be a good show so you want to stick around let's take care of a little quick housekeeping as always got the QR code to support the show it'll be up all show long it'll take you straight to our buy me a coffee page you just want to get us a cheap cup of coffee and help us keep bringing you great authors entertainers and artists all year long like I said just a cheap cheap cup of coffee is all it takes at buymeacoffee.com. And if you really want to get crazy and support the show, we got our merch page. That thing, oh, you're just going to want to check that out. We got all kinds of good stuff. Uh, T-shirts, coffee mugs. Oh, and we did get a request uh, for a ladies V-neck T-shirt. So 2024, we're looking forward to trying to get that for you a ladies v-neck since we had a few requests for it and see see if that helps on some merch sales to support the show (laughs) well enough of all of that let's get to our great guest like i said the incredible author roy huff coming to you live from waikiki hawaii oh how you doing roy my friend i'm so glad you could join us thank you it's a pleasure Uh, oh you're coming to us live from Waikiki, beautiful Waikiki. How, how is it out there? Uh, it's great. I mean, I love it. I, I've lived here now for almost 30 years. Yeah, this year makes 30 years, so. Oh, yeah. wait, where are you from originally? Um, well, I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. My father was, um, you know, he was in the military for a little bit and then lived in Kentucky till I was six and then, then we moved to Charlotte when I was six years old. and came here to go to college and I stayed so I've been here since I've been 17. No, oh, that that's the way to do it. That's right. It's yeah. like, nope, I'm not leaving. No. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So uh we yeah, I, I mean I, I can I've actually never been to Hawaii and I mean obviously it's uh yeah, beautiful. Beautiful state, you know, and and so we what do you uh do for fun out there? You Go volcano climbing, or <laughs> it's funny you mentioned volcano climbing. I mean, one of the one of my jobs is actually I developed Hawaii's first volcanic smog model. Um, so I I wrote, actually wrote a peer reviewed paper on the Kilauea volcano um, and the the VOG. I <clears throat> predicted you know where the VOG would going to be. So it's volcanic smog. Hmm. So I did that um, for a while, and then um, after that, I was working on a grant for NASA for Gozar. Um, and yeah so um yeah um, but for fun i mean you just walk out to the beach i mean you know my wife and i we go hiking all the time we're hiking today at uh uh coco head uh near hanama bay it's it's really beautiful out there that's that's amazing yeah and it's well it definitely uh sounds like you're scientifically grounded uh (laughs) from your university education then (laughs) yeah i love science love Uh, it Imagine so with your genre, right? That's a, <laughs> that you write. Yes, how, how did it definitely you get, helps. Yeah, how did you get into writing anyway? Uh, um, I was working on my fourth degree at the time, and I had a do a creative writing paper for an English class, and so this was actually the uh, paper that eventually became my first book, Everville. So, like, we had to share. Um, you know, our, our paper with other students. And then one of the students said, oh, I could read a whole story about Everville. And then I was like, 
I can do that, I think. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that that became my first book a couple of years later. Right. And, and I mean, that uh, eventually became a series or? Yeah. Yeah. So I have four four books in the series. Um, that was my first series. And then uh, the, I did a, a nonfiction Think Smart, Not Hard book after that series. And then I've started a time travel series. So I published the first book in a time travel series back in 2020. And actually, I had been sitting on it for a couple of years. And then uh, right when the lockdown came, I said, OK, well, this is a great time for me just to publish it. I had it. I, I had the first draft done and I um, polished it and then I published it a few months later and um, it did really well. Got a lot of offers for the audio books. Um, and yeah, it's kind of taken off from there. Oh, that, that, that's awesome. Yeah. And it's a, well, I mean, and that, that's kind of an amazing, amazing transition. You find a lot of, uh, you know, moving to the the, the writing arts from, from such a heavy scientific background. I mean, did you, you know, it was, I imagine the genre you're writing in, is it kind of a, it was second nature launching? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Trekkie, you know, I mean, I grew up on Star Trek. I mean, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, everything about it. I love it. You know, so, I mean, yeah, it's a perfect fit. You know, it's like a uh, Sheldon on, uh, you know, Big Bang Theory, right? I mean, <laughs> perfect. Right, right. But no, it, it's, it's a, you know, an amazing amount of work, uh, obviously, uh, you know, for each series that you, that you have up and, and just can you, I mean, why don't you, uh, let me, let me pull them back up for everybody to kind of see. I, I mean, you know, when you talk about you started Everville coming off of just, you know, this creative writing paper, I mean, can you tell yeah. us a little about the series and, and what was the uh, Which one, for? Everville? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it really was just a paper. And so, like, I had a, a character, um, Owen Sage, and he falls. So he's going to college and he, he falls into this portal and ends up in this other world called Everville. And then so he starts to learn that he has this this uh, background that he didn't know he, he had. Um, and so, you know, he has to save the world, basically. <laughs> like, oh, exactly. Most books, you got to save the world, you know? So like, that's right. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, that's the basic thing behind it. Um, and so there's these creatures and that he has to, you know, fight and he has to get the help of his friends and everything to help him out. Um, yeah. So that's, that's basically the, main part of that uh, series yeah it, it, it looks like an extremely interesting series you had the fall of bracken bone uh, the rise of mallory the city of worms yeah. and the first pillar i believe yeah and uh the, yeah and then uh you know moving along when you what got you into the time travel series well, uh, you know, I mean, I always like time travel <clears throat> and actually I had, you know, I had it actually, I was sitting, sitting on it for a couple of years and, you know, I loved, I think Groundhog Day was, it, it still is my, probably my favorite movie of all time. Right. I've watched it like 50 times. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you know, there's a lot of time looping in there. Um, you know, there's a unique aspect of time travel. You know, if you read the book, you'll, you'll learn about it. Um, and, you know, there are some things that I, I didn't like, you know, I mean, I, I don't like the idea of paradoxes. Personally, I think they're kind of stupid. <laughs> so I wanted to write something where there's no paradox, you know, where, you know, like, oh, you know, you know, we're going to disappear in the future or something. So, um, you know, it, it definitely has a multiverse element in there, but I don't want to give away too much. But there's a lot of interesting things that are happening. Um, you know, it looks at different aspects of time travel and the universe and um, you know I inter introduced the concept of the, the holographic universe and, and a few other things uh, to kind of explain some of the science behind the time travel but you know I mean it's I think you know a lot of sci-fi part of its escapism part of you know people let, like they like time travel I think you know if you could redo things what would they be so I think there's a lot of that in there um, and I think I think it's fun to kind of think about. I think a lot of people think about, you know, if, if you could redo things over and over again. Yeah. And, you know, as you get as you get older, like you different, you have a different perspective. I, I think, you know, when the first idea came into my head about time travel, 
I think I wanted to do a whole bunch of stuff over again. And now I'm just kind of like a place in my life where I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm kind of glad things went the way they did, you know, even the bad stuff. Cause like it, you know, it helps you learn who you are and, and, you know, you, you have some, you know, interesting, you know, instances of serendipity and a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah. So and, you just go into a different place. Yeah. And, and well, the, the topic of time travel, obviously, you know, like you said, fascinates a lot of people. And, and I think as we we watch the exponential growth of technology happening right before our eyes, that it's a. Uh, it, it makes it even more interesting as a, as a genre. But do, do you find that some of the things you're writing about in a, you know, a futuristic sense or, or whatever, I mean, they, I know how long it takes to get a work through and uh, finish it up and get it to market, you know, heck, some yeah. things, have you ever had that come up on you where some things that you were writing about in a futuristic sense are all of a sudden happening <laughs> while, while you're writing the book? Yeah, I mean, well, 2020 was an interesting year, right? Right. <laughs> I right. mean, yeah. And like, I mean, I wrote the book, I think it was uh, like 2017, I think I wrote it like in maybe September around there. So like, uh, you know, a lot of things happened, um, you know, in the few years since I wrote the first draft. Um, yeah, and I had to, I had to make, you know, quite a few um, references and, and a few changes here and there <laughs> in the first book. Um, right. I mean, yeah, life is funny that way. Yeah, I could see it happening. That's for sure. But it, yeah. it's uh, <laughs> and which how you know we talk a lot to different authors about how the technique for the stories develop for you uh, as you're writing, and uh, you know, do you have any kind of specific technique that you use? Uh, are you a start to finish kind of guy or a, a beginning and end and flesh out the skeleton? <laughs> you know, I, you know, I think I've done kind of everything really. I mean, I. I used to be more of a marathon writer, um, and I think the last few years, because I travel a lot now, I used to, um, you know, during my vacation time, I would, you know, pound out a book. I think my second book I wrote in six days. So, I mean, I, wow. <laughs> I've i written them pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, I've done like, you know, 40, 50 page days and, you know, um, but my last couple of books I, I, I wrote over the course of a year. Um, uh, especially the last one, I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of adopting like a page a day kind of strategy just, um, and then like I, I get up really early, I get up at around 4 a.m. So like I try to get a page a day in the morning and then in the afternoon I'll do some editing. So like I like to have kind of a rough outline, but not my first series, like I had no outlines. And then what I started to do is just have a little bit of an idea, um, kind of an idea where, where I want to go with the ending, the main characters, a few things, and then I'll just kind of fill in the outline as I go. So I think that's kind of where I am. But I think I think I'm going to move more and I've been moving more towards a little bit more of a detailed outline, not not too detailed, but just, you know, a couple of ideas about a scene or two in each of the, the chapters and then just kind of um, move from there as I write. Um, and I think I think that's that's working for me. Yeah. So so. The fourth book, Time Travel Universe, uh, I believe, was just kind of came out, and uh, yeah, it just it just uh, came out on Friday. I had a pre-release up for about a month or so, but it, it just came out, just went live on Friday. Oh, awesome, awesome! And jeez, uh, I I tell you, we we talk a lot about marketing too as a indie author and and getting it out there. We, we, what are you doing since uh, you know? I really wanted to talk to you about that given the amount of work you have uh because it is you know obviously for an indie author and it's it's tough you know the marketing aspect because you don't have that right. huge marketing department to support you or whatever but what are you doing uh as far as pushing this your, your works well, you know, I, I do a lot of, I used to do with my first series, I, I did free promos. I don't do free promos anymore because like a lot of times you give stuff away for free and then they don't pay for it. Right. So what I'll do, I, run, I run discount promos now, like on, like when I'm running, like right now I'm having a discount, a 99 cent promo for the second book in the series. And I had one for the first book leading up to uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so they, they work really well. And then I have uh, kind of constant advertising on, on Amazon. Um, that really gets me my best ROI. Um, I had a book bub promotion in the UK for uh, the first book a few weeks ago. Um, so, you know, those are tough if you can get them. But 
yeah, that works. I mean, the discount promos work. I do other kinds of advertising. Uh, and then, of course, I have my website. I'll ha- you know, I have like a little free short story that I give out to collect people's um, emails so that I can I can get them on my list and and let them know about, you know, projects that I have and that kind of thing. Um, so that's that's kind of primarily what I'll do. Amazon, you know, discount promos and then my uh, my email uh, that I send out. Well, that's a, yeah, I tell you, it's a, it's a nonstop grind, you know, to, to make sure you get your work in front of people because that's, that's yeah. really what it is. And, and I, I actually love the sci-fi genre just because a lot of, a lot of the events you can, uh, you know, post yourself in to let people know about your work are just always a decent time you know it, it's yeah because i love author meet the author events that we have around here as well and in, in new orleans and when i travel around uh those are fun as well but sci-fi in particular is a genre always has a you know great conventions <laughs> that's what yeah 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 and well do, do you find you get uh a huge base from that though any kind of those events or or do you mainly stick to you know uh internet advertising that type of thing yeah i've been to a couple of events i don't really promote them there so like i mean i i i have um I'm, I'm on twitter quite a bit you know interacting with um people there um yeah, Twitter's probably where I, I reach out the most. I mean, I do I do a little bit of stuff on Facebook, so it's pr- it's primarily online. I don't really go out to events too much. I mean, I travel a lot, but I I don't really go to too many events. I probably will. I think I would like to go more. So I mean, I think at some point I'll start to go more. Um, but yeah, primarily I, I do things online. Yeah, I think I'm. I think it's more like I'm just. Well, obviously, I'm kind of a people person. I was, you know, I'm always talking to somebody, so it's uh, running my mouth, I guess, you know. Yeah. It's probably because I like to hear myself talk like my ex-wife used to say. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think we all kind of like to hear ourselves talk. I think that's kind of human nature, right? <laughs> well, are you working on, uh, is this going to be the last book in the series uh, for the time travel series? No, I don't think so. I mean, I have, I think I'm wor- I'm working on an outline for, I have kind of a uh, base outline for the next book. I don't know how many I'm going to do in this. Uh, honestly, I don't. Um, I have another, I have a space opera that I'm, that I've started to write and I don't know how many, that, that'll probably my, be my next series. So I'm not sure when I, I'm kind of itching to get that space opera out. And, and the space opera really is something that's been with me for a long time. I mean, just, I mentioned that there's a huge trackie. So I don't know, you know, 35 years, I've been thinking about doing a space opera kind of. Right. right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of would like to like to do that. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm thinking about next year or the year after that, getting that, that space opera out. So we'll, we'll just kind of have to see how um, it goes. I, I might be doing, you know, two books you know one in, in each series so we'll kind of have to see how things play out uh but i think i'm going to write the series arc first before i move forward with the um the rough draft of the first book i, I have about four chapters in that first book and i have a, an outline for the first book but i want to kind of flesh out a lot of the characters and make it more of a I have a lot more world building to that um space opera series so we'll just see how how it pulls me away from the current series and you know maybe i can do both at the same time or maybe i'll just go into the other one we'll see but i'll definitely have at least one more that's going to come out um i might step away from it for a while and do some more we'll see yeah it sounds like we got a scoop on cocktails with cap and we're waiting for the thing (laughs) that's for sure (laughs) but no i i tell you what well your series are definitely fascinating i hope everybody uh definitely checks out you know they're all available on amazon obviously and uh royhuff.net and ladies and gentlemen i know uh hadn't mentioned it yet but and i always have a backwards camera problem but directly above us look uh we have the qr code to take you straight to royhuff.net uh where you can view all of his great works uh his series time traveling and everville and uh 
Yeah, Roy, I, I tell you what, I'm so glad you came on, let the viewers get to know you and, and talk about your work. Uh, I mean, is there anything else I miss, I missed in your work that you want to let everybody know about? No, I think that's it. I mean, I, I think the time travel series I'm pushing really hard right now. So like, you know, Podium Audio has got the audio books out. I'm really thankful that uh, Podium Audio was um, gracious enough to <laughs> right. you know, give me a contract and, and help me put those those audio books out. So uh, those that like to listen, they can, you know, jump onto Audible and, and you know, download those. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I forgot to mention I was a professional audio book narrator, Roy. <laughs> uh, no, I was. <laughs> I, I want the space opera, Roy. No, I'm just <laughs> but no, I, I I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, please. And and I know I I got to know Roy on, on X. He's a great writing community member. Uh, and and by all means, please go follow him over on X. He's at Real Roy Huff. Uh give him a follow and that way you can keep up with all of, all of his great work that's uh not only out but coming out as well uh his future work but again yeah just please you know go visit his site royhuff.net it'll be right on that qr code um and check those out and give him a follow on x and roy look really i appreciate you taking the time coming to us live from waikiki man it's it's i'm glad we could coordinate it up Thank you for having me. I do appreciate it. Oh, no problem. And, and look, if you ever need anything, when your new work comes out, please remember Cocktails with Cab. We'd love to have you back on. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. Thank you so much. All right, Roy. Cheers, man. All right. Cheers.